In this episode of Dolce Vita, savor sweet life in the French style at sea. Explore fun ways to enjoy your downtime. Enjoy culinary creation inspired by Shanghainese and Hunan dishes. Delve into the world of art with a passionate gallerist. And appreciate the beauty of feminine tenderness. When it comes to living the sweet life, I think that the French know a thing or two because this country is famous for producing a lot of different products that can turn your life into a truly sweet one. Yeah, whether it's food, luxury goods, cosmetics, or wine, or even this motor vehicle, this luxury yacht, you can always catch a glimpse of what the French call the sweet life. So recently, yachts manufactured in France have been getting a lot of attention. Can you tell us why? So, you know, basically in the world, you have three countries that really manufacture this kind of yacht. You have the British, you have the Italian, and you have the French. Mm. But when I think about French, I may think about lifestyle. Mm. And I think this analogy applies very well to yachts, and very well to this yacht, where effectively here, everything is about lifestyle. It's about lifestyle because it's a great combination between comfort, between practic practicity, and between style. Oh, well said. <laughs> now, a luxury yacht is an integrated development project. Why do you think that the French are doing such a good job in the recent years? So, in this specific yacht, I believe we are really in a breakthrough of what yacht is about. Mm. And with this new design, we effectively creating a new living space in the cockpit, so on the main deck, which is the closest part uh, to the sea, in order to be connected to it. So this is one part. Another part is that we've been doing a huge work at connecting the various area of the boat. So you, have, you can enjoy being at the platform, totally at the back, and very easily you arrive to the cockpit, very easily you are linked to the saloon here and to the kitchen. So those are really some, some way of thinking that make your time on board being extremely pleasant. So the design is functional, it's aesthetically pleasing. What makes French yachts reliable? So this builder is simply the largest in terms of volume oh, okay. builder in the world. Mm. And so this has a huge advantage, which is to allow them to invest to very proper manufacturing process. Doing so, they are very, very comfortable with their level of quality and they can offer warranties that are the best on the market. Wow, that's a peace of mind that's good to have. Absolutely. <laughs> hmm. You know, Veron, I... Wait, hold on a sec, Lena. Listen. It's the sound of the ocean waves, so peaceful and quiet, right? You know, a lot of the time our life is so busy and there's so much to do. If only we can just stay here on this luxury yacht and chillax all day. Well, you're not wrong, it is relaxing. But knowing where and how to unleash the true potential of your luxury yacht is the key. In your opinion, how can we make the best out of this French yacht? So you know, the idea behind this yacht is simply to have a very luxury villa, but at sea. So, so you have a number of possibilities to do so. Uh, a first option is to enjoy a very nice glass of champagne, as we are doing. Cheers. 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 <laughs> the second option would be to enjoy some sun tanning, uh, here or possibly on the flybridge upstairs. Oh, that's very nice. Seems like you can use every inch of this yacht and really enjoy every part of it. Absolutely. Right, and enjoying the sea wise, you know, in Europe, people like to go yachting a lot. But what makes Hong Kong a great destination for yachting? So, I think too often people have been limiting the yachting in Hong Kong, like leaving for lunch mm -hmm. and coming back at night. Oh. But effectively, the number of 
possible destination in Hong Kong is incredible. Mm -hmm. I spent my last holidays on the yacht. I effectively spent six days with a bunch of friends uh, on a yacht going from one point to another in Hong Kong with a great, great variety of activity. Knowing on top that Hong Kong is probably the only destination in the world where you can go out at sea uh, 12 months a year. Wow. Because the climate is, is effectively so friendly. You've yeah. sold me on Hong Kong as a great destination. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So where do you see the future of yacht business? So I think in the past one and a half year, uh, the yachting business has been changing a lot. Hmm. Because people have been realizing that uh, traveling may become more and more complicated and they've been looking for uh, uh, for opportunity for ways to enjoy life mm, yeah. uh, with with few restrictions and and with with something on which you can have a lot of diversity where you can change your mind so i think it's a fantastic escape out of hong kong but in staying in hong kong it's why i'm very very optimistic uh, and we see that the demand uh, uh, for yacht uh, is, is definitely eye increasing and, 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 and I believe will we'll, we'll remain like this. Hey Lena, it's so nice! What do you have in mind? Well, the sun's out, the yacht's ready, and it's an amazing view. Mm. You have to get into your swimwear. Clubhouse is a place where residents can socialize, stay in shape, and enjoy the unique lifestyle. For both children and adults, social life is an important part of quality living. A spacious party room takes you to a tranquil sanctuary. From recreational facilities to a comfy lounge, everything you need for parties and social gatherings is right under the same roof. I love to entertain and have friends over, but sometimes I like to have lots of friends and do some activities that I might not have in my own house, so having a space like this would be perfect. This really is a hub for all recreational activities, but an all-inclusive clubhouse is much more than that. That's right, it's time to move the party outside. A clubhouse with indoor and outdoor pampering facilities is paradise for many. Apart from an indoor open kitchen and outdoor barbecue area, a swimming pool is essential. With an affinity pool surrounded by greenery, just steps away from your home, you can enjoy a poolside drink, a good book, and have a good chit-chat with your friends and family. Ruby, I don't know about you, but I love Chinese food. And because there are so many different culinary traditions, that means there's a lot of different methods for cooking Chinese food. For example, there's roasted, there's steamed, there's stir-fried, there's deep-fried, there's sweet and sour, and there's so many options, that means you can never get tired. Yeah, China has 34 provinces, and every province has their own culinary traditions. But when we think of Chinese food, I have a certain image in my head. It's a big family, we have a big round table, and then there's lots of food on the table, different colors and different savory flavors as well. I think it's a nice time to munch away and chit chat and enjoy the simple moments of life. Chinese dishes can be exquisite and Instagrammable. When the glass dome is lifted, the earthy floral mist of smoked jasmine tea leaves wafts into the air and tantalizes the palate, revealing a generous portion of smoked palm frit. With its delicately sweet flesh, this smoked palm frit is definitely a culinary sensation. With abalone, fish maw, sea cucumber, and goose feet, but a jump over the wall is always a nutritious Chinese delicacy. To enrich the taste and bring a taste of Hunan-style cuisine, the chef adds some chopped chilies, making it a flavorful and umami-packed dish. Mmm! Wow, this is delicious! 
Lena, this dish is smoked fish with jasmine tea leaves. It's very nice. And usually when we go to Chinese restaurants, there's one course that's a fish, right? But this one especially, the first bite I had it, it's very tasty, it's delicate, and then the smoky flavor starts coming out. I think it's in a good sharing size as well. Well, it does sound delicious now that you mention it. But let me tell you about my dish. Now, usually Buddha jumping over the wall is a soup, but this time it's in a wok fried dish. And it has so many tasty and luxurious ingredients in there with an amazing smell. It actually made it really hard for me to decide what to eat first. In fact, why don't you try some now? Okay, sure. Steamed fish head with a wild array of colorful chilies is one of the eight signature dishes in Hunan cuisine. How to elevate this traditional dish to a luxurious one? The chef complements it by the addition of luscious fresh lobster, creating a visually stunning dish that brings a wow factor to the table. Whether it's steamed rice, sticky rice, or even fried rice, when it comes to Chinese cuisine, rice is a must-have. As rice plays a prominent role in Chinese cuisine, how can we not mention a rice dish before we sum up this Chinese food sensation? Characterized by its delicate flavors, this whole crab fried rice is definitely the star of this food sensation, as the slightly sweet taste of crab paste just elevates the whole dish, taking this culinary journey to another level. Authentic and hearty, this is why Chinese food always holds a special place in our hearts. After the break, sit down with a gallery founder to share her aspiration. And check out women's wear that celebrates the beauty of female grace. I think Hong Kong has become one of a very, very important art hub in Asia. I would use three kind of adjectives to describe Hong Kong. Um, being extremely vibrant, evolving ever, or ever evolving, and it is a growing, sophisticated art city. And the reason I say so is because since 2010, so many different institutions and artists, art fairs, and interests growing in Hong Kong, that at the moment, I feel like um, we are at the heart of the Asia, for sure. Since 2020, Hong Kong has become the number two uh, art hub in the world. So this tells you the importance of Hong Kong. Hong Kong has always been known for a number of things. Stunning skyline, amazing shopping, delicious food. However, in the past few decades, it has also become a bit of a haven for art boasting a range of exceptional art galleries. And this is all thanks to a number of passionate cultural workers. And today, we're lucky enough to meet one of them. So Henrietta, we are now in your art space. So can you tell us a little bit about what's the motivation behind opening this art space? So I started this uh, art gallery back in 2006. Um, at that moment, it, life was good. I was a, a corporate finance banker and I could have done a lot of stuff, but I felt like I really wanted to do something that I am passionate about. And as, as, a, as a young kind of um, painter, not really artist, because I wasn't very creative. So I thought I could like oh, open a gallery and, and start to promote artists. At that time, there were only around 10 galleries in Hong Kong. And since 2006, at the moment, in Hong Kong, um, in terms of like how vibrant it is, we already have about 120 galleries. So, what are some of the challenges you faced? Uh, I mean, is it tough to stay competitive in Hong Kong? At the very beginning of this art career, there were no one to turn to. Um, at the beginning in Hong Kong, there weren't much international attention to what's going on in Hong Kong, let alone what happened to Hong Kong artists, for example. So I had to go uh, out of my way and, and we, I went to, actually went to Spain to um, learn how to run a gallery with a, with a 150 year old gallery. So my husband and I, we went there and spent some time there, learned about like oh, front of house, back of house, how to build a career for our colleagues. Like we need to provide the same kind of um, business model so that um, people would join this industry. 
even up till now, the biggest challenge for art, I think, whether it is in the museum sector, um, in the, as, a, as an artist, for example, or running an art business like us, um, talent is the most scarce. So we, we always look out for talent. So if people are really interested in art, I would recommend them to really go pursue it and study and, and try to make a career out of it. It's definitely very rewarding. Well, I can see you've come a long way. I mean, you've gotten us Fernando Botero here. What do you think it is about his work that will appeal to Hong Kong people? Mm. Fernando Botero is one of the biggest major living artists in the world. Definitely, whenever there's a chance to see Botero and have a feeling of Boterismo, I think uh, Hong Kong public alike and other everyone should come and see it. We wanted to bring uh, joy to Hong Kong and we want to bring something different to Tycoon. I believe that um, um, having an up-close discussion like what we're doing now is usually quite encouraging. So instead of hosting a huge, huge exhibition somewhere outside, I rather bring him in here. So everything you see this time came from his own apartments. So for the uninitiated, um, what do you think they can, what kind of message do you think they can get from Fernando's work? Mm. Fernando, uh, there's one major theme that goes through his work, it's um, pleasure. And the second thing is the volume. So he believes that volume would induce beauty. So I think for, for the public to come and enjoy, um, try to understand the composition of his work and, and the use of colors and um, just his brush stroke to create volume. He actually really loved creating still lifes. He feels that using still life, the mundane, the most useless things or everyday things, um, create numerable and limitless um, ideas for, for him to paint. So what he did here was he created a, a large size of a watermelon and juxtaposed it with a very tiny knife, if you can see, yeah. which is also volumetric. Yeah, and I guess that's his genius, to find the interesting within the mundane, like you said. So, finally, uh, what's next for you? What, what do you have in store in the future? What's your ambition? Mm. So, um, well, I, our wish and our vision is to continue to promote art in Hong Kong. We will continue to bring in a lot of amazing artists from around the world. At the same time, we are also deeply invested in NFTs. So we will continue to learn about Metaverse and how this very creative new universe would do this digital realm would, would, would help evolve the art world and how we can continue to relate to young people making use of uh, Metaverse and NFTs. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for, for introducing me to, to this space and this work. And thank you for bringing so much art into Hong Kong. Thank, thank you, you Darren. Like, st spend some time on the day bed. Yeah, I, I would love to. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. With the belief that every generation has its own iconic design philosophy, Hong Kong-born fashion designer Charlie Ho dedicates herself to portraying the beauty of love and feminine tenderness by modernizing and refining the classic art of jadeite interior designs. So what is your design philosophy? What are you trying to present through your designs? I like to enhance on females' femininities and I like to emphasize on their own character the uniqueness of their soft heart and I think this is one of the most beautiful things on earth. Sounds very romantic. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I like to use my watercolor drawings or even like a simple story or a story of a girl's heart and transform it into my clothing. And my main focus is to show the soft side of a woman. I think with someone is confident, they won't be afraid to show the fragile side of themselves and it only shows their confidence. Definitely, there's a beauty to vulnerability. Yeah. So what textiles, patterns, or prints do you apply to your design? You can see my clothing, they're very soft and furry. I normally use a silk in chiffon, satin, or lace. They all present the femininity of a garment. 
I also transform my watercolor print into the fabric to make into a soft and colorful look. I like to work with color a lot. Different color combinations create different feelings. For example, with purple, add some yellow and pinkish color. It's become very youngish, uh, refreshing look of it. And uh, we also add white into colorful fabric, so it makes the um, whole look be more refreshing. So how do you stay competitive running a fashion brand in Hong Kong? To stay competitive, I need to um, present my design and ideas for different channels and media and update my ideas from time to time. Starting J Jewelry Design is also one of my plans to transform this traditional gemstone into a fashionable jewelry that can mix with everyday garments and clothing. So out of all the gemstones, why did you choose jade? Because uh, every piece of jade is unique and it can be very colorful and sometimes it can be transparent. I feel that it has a special connection to, with my watercolor drawing. Jade Jewelry has been long crying for new ideas and inspiration. And that's why I choose this traditional gemstone to make it more trendy and fashionable. Every generation has its own iconic design philosophy, but there's one thing that remains consistent, and that is if there are great designs, they'll help us accentuate our beauty. We can mix and match different styles, and sometimes we can even use fashion to express our own personality. That's all the time we have for this week's episode. If you enjoyed what we've introduced and want to find out more, simply check out our program website. Join us again in the coming weeks to discover the essence of a sweet life, as we will take you to experience Hong Kong's dynamic dining scene, stay on top of the latest happenings in town, and see the world through the eyes of people from different backgrounds. Be sure to tune in again next time!